This is the Be Helpful Podcast, where conversations with budding entrepreneurs prepare you for the wild journey of building a business or side hustle. All right. Today, I sit down with Jade McDonald. She's the Chief Product Officer and Co-Founder at Navigate Maturity. How's it going? Good, good. Another day in the life. Really glad to be here. Thanks for making time for me today. Oh, thank you. Thank you. All right. So I like starting every interview with this fun question that we got from a previous guest. What did you want to be growing up? Uh, <laughs> uh, I wanted to be a lot of things growing up. I think the thing I stuck with the longest was veterinarian. So then I realized I don't love animals that much. So I don't know where it came from, but that was the one for me. <laughs> All right. So, so I'll be curious. So your interest in being a veterinarian, um, where did that kind of take you from like your career perspective? Like what career did you end up going even before Navigate? So I have had a winding road in my career, actually. Um, it went from vet to, okay, maybe I don't want animals, but I do like medicine. So we'll do uh, dentistry. And I hung out into that for a while, all the way you know, through college, maybe halfway through college, I met organic chemistry. I did not like organic chemistry. Organic chemistry was not feeling me. So I was like, you know, maybe it's time we pivot. Um, by then, I knew I was interested in healthcare. So I stuck with it. I decided to go into medical device sales. I did that for about eight years with a couple of different companies. And again, I love healthcare. I was really interested in that aspect of my job, but I'm actually more of an introvert. So sales was not my jam. It took me a while to dig around and figure out what it was I liked. And I just learned, you know, I like uncovering needs and that is a part of sales that I enjoyed. But the sticking point for me was like, I'm selling a solution that's stuck in its, you know, set in stone. And if, if I don't have the answer to their problem there, then I just can't help. I started realizing I would probably want to be involved in developing a solution. And around the time that I was realizing that I got into UX design. Um, and I've, I've really been on the design track since then and loving it. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. And, and in many ways, it makes a lot of sense like that that interest of kind of problem solving, but feeling limited. And then this kind of foray into, okay, well, what if, what if I didn't have those barriers or those kind of shackles on me? That, that That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's been the most amazing part of my job is like, now I understand the problem and the sky's the limit. So whatever I create, as long as, you know, it's reasonable and it's within good business sense. Uh, it just makes me feel a lot more empowered in my career. So, I like it. I like it. So, so tell me about kind of this passion for Black maternal health and kind of how you got into this field. I know you mentioned your interest in healthcare. Um, how did you find this problem to solve? Yeah. So that is actually more our CEO and founder Ariana McGee. She actually had four kids in under five years. And yeah, during the <laughs> pandemic, it was a very wild ride. Um, I came onto the team about a year into the mission, but essentially she came up with the idea because she moved from Denver to Fort Wayne during the pandemic and was really concerned around the number of times she was seeing her doctor and being touched, which was not often at all. She started doing some research and learned that the maternal mortality and morbidity rate in Fort Wayne is amongst the worst in the country. And mm -hmm. she started to just kind of dig and, and she noticed that this is an issue that touches black and brown women, you know, a lot more dramatically than it does white women or just the general majority. And she felt, you know, there's a need for us to investigate the space, did a little bit more digging. And we found that a lot of the issues that these mothers are facing are preventable with proactive care instead of reactive care. And so from there it became, how do we close that gap? What is it that we need to do? Uh, so that's how it came along. And she um, asked a couple different people in her network, just, you know, what ideas we might have to close the gap in the space. And that's where the team came from. And we've been running with it ever since. 
That's awesome. That it's, so I'd like to I'd like to explore a little bit. What was it like for you to join a founder's mission? Right, like this wasn't your idea. Like how mm-hmm. how how did that feel? How did what was that experience? I you know for me, I think this situation just came together so nicely because when I when I was making my career pivot, I was actually working for another company that was within the healthcare space that was trying to close the gap of care between black and white patients, just kind of a different lane. Um, And I was doing a fellowship with them. That fellowship was coming to a close. And uh, I was talking to Ariana and like, yeah, we'll we'll see. I'm figuring out what I'm going to do. They needed a designer at the time. And, you know, they're like, we need to develop our MVP just, you know, come and jump on the team. So for me, it was awesome because I was familiar with her struggle and with her concerns. I would love to have kids at some point. And the idea of coming into a space that's already healed when it's time for me to have children and being able to say that I contributed to that that answer or that solution meant a lot. Um, and so I jumped on. Um, I didn't know how long it was going to last or, you know, what we were going to do. But the more I got into it, of course, the more passionate I became about the cause. And um, I'm really glad to be here. But it was a, it was an interesting transition. Yeah. 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 What what would you say is kind of for 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 the listeners? I'm, I'm, <clears throat> excuse me. We're we're exploring this idea of personal readiness for entrepreneurship, right? This idea of, okay, what is it really like, right? Let's, let's, let's get away from some of the social media leadership and, you know, viral clips of, of what people say entrepreneurship is like. So I'm curious from your perspective, what was the transition or what misconceptions did you have about entrepreneurship and being on a founding team and chasing a specific problem that you're trying to solve without the constraints and kind of now doing it for how many years? Uh, This is two. I'm finishing up my second year now. Okay. Yeah. I think it's, you're never going to be ready. Like you just do it and figure it out as you go. Uh, That's something that we talk about as a team all the time, Uh, especially a team of four black women, right? Um, We do have to know our information. We do have to be prepared. We, we, there's a certain level of performance that we have to show and display um, to be part of the team or, you know, to seem reputable, whatever that looks like. Um, and you're never really ready for that. And as we get up and we're looking around at what each of us is doing every day, when I get up, you know, I know how to design stuff. I know generally how a business works, but I never know what's going to hit me. And you, you, you can't be prepared. It's really just, okay, now here we are. Uh, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And just giving it my best every day. The a big lesson for me lately has been um, to stop saying I'm trying because mm-hmm. every day we're trying, but you never actually stop trying. The At the point that you've stopped trying, you've already done what you needed to do. So for me, it's like you're constantly doing, you may not do it the best the first time, but you did it. And, you know, just looking, using that as a momentum to say, all right, cool. Like I can make it through everything. I may not make it through in the best way the first time, but I iterate another design word. I iterate and I get better, but you're never ready. You just go in and answer the questions as they come. Yeah. It's, it's, it's fascinating, you know, listening to you say that because um, I think about my struggles as an entrepreneur and, you know, Hey, I'm a perfectionist that knows perfection doesn't exist. <laughs> so before I um, try to tackle something, I look at, okay, well, what's the best thing? Like, what's the best version of this? What's good enough? And let's see if I can find somewhere in between. And it's fascinating because of the mindset that I come in with. Um, I'm like an operations process improvement person. So I'm always looking at it from an efficiency perspective, what can scale, what's kind of repeatable. And sometimes that concept, it's a design concept, it's a development concept of iterating as you go. Um, that very agile approach is not what I do, which 
probably is the smarter way to do it, <laughs> given the given the resources. And so it, it is interesting to kind of hear you talk about um, just trying. And the moment you're not trying, you've figured it out. You're you're kind of in a decent spot. Um, whereas I'm, rather than saying I'm trying, I think I'm constantly attempting to perfect, uh, mm. which is sometimes exhausting. Not sometimes, it's always exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For me, it's definitely, I can be a bit of a perfectionist, but I think with the timelines that we've been on, it's just been like, ugh, I don't, I don't have the time that I wish I had to make it perfect. So let's just see how this goes. Like, let's just, yeah. we'll come back to it if I need to fix this, but you know, this is what I had in the time that I have. And it, it's, can be difficult to let that go, but it makes me feel better to say I'm iterating. So I just. Yeah. <laughs> so, so um, as we kind of jump around these kind of various topics, I, I'm curious about that concept of time um, and how you manage it effectively. Cause you obviously have those time pressures of, we've got to hit this deadline. We've got to submit this application. I want to talk about some of the pitch competitions that you guys have participated in and been wildly successful in, but you have those external pressures, but then you have your own internal pressures around time and then you have your life. <laughs> so what does time management look like for you and how do you kind of manage it all? Yeah. So we'll talk about when my time management is at its best. Um, okay. <laughs> so, um, it, all of that, first I'll say, I'm learning that all of that is a process. Yeah. And I give myself space every week for it to look a little different if it needs mm. to. Um, that's new for me too, because before Navigate, it was like, I want a regimen, like, boom, boom, boom. This is what I'm doing on this day. This is what I'm doing on that day. When you're building a business, every day is different. Um mm. So ideally for me, um, and I still work a full-time job as well, I just try my best to batch my time. So I'll get up in the morning early, like 5 a.m. If I'm working out, I do a lot of really strange things. Boy, you're going to try to make it all happen. Like I'll go, to sleep. I'll go to bed early, but I'll put on my gym clothes early or go before I go to bed. I will sleep. Okay. I'll wake up. I'll go to the gym. I'll come back. I have a couple of hours before work starts. I do navigate stuff or take calls, do office hours and such. And then I work my actual job. And then once that's done, I'll, you know, I may have other calls weaved in there, but when that's done, I commit a couple of hours to navigate. Um, and usually I just, I live by my calendar. It's like, okay, I have these three hours, you know, each day or maybe every other day, depending on what I have available. And I list, you know, at least three things that I need to do in that amount of time. And then everything else is overflow for weekends. So now, um, since I wake up early five in the morning, I'm up early on the weekends. Nobody else wants to hang out on the weekends. Cool. Now I have like, you know, I don't want to, nobody's up at six. Like, hey, girl, what you doing? So I'll just do my work then and, you know, three, four hours, knock it out. Um, and if I have overflow, it may go into Sunday where like Sundays, I make sure I make zero plans so that I can reset, do laundry, do, you know, like all the home yeah. stuff I'm at the house. And if I want to like watch Abbott elementary or something and finish up whatever work I didn't get done for the week, I can do that. But, um, yeah, I would say like, that's my ideal framework. And then, you know, some things come in. And I, I'll work around it, but I, I try my best to batch my time and be organized with what I have to do. That's, that's very smart. Um, and yeah, I, I try to do something similar. Um, I haven't tried putting my workout clothes on the <laughs> night before. Um, and, and that's not the judge. I'm actually, again, operations. I'm thinking about it's wildly efficient. <laughs> Say really quick when you wake up at five in the morning, you don't want to get out of bed. It's like, but I already have my workout clothes on. I just have to like brush my teeth and get some water and go. How embarrassing if I'm 
if I just wake up and now I slept, these were now effectively my pajamas and I did nothing with this. So I, it's like a way to guilt myself into going. It's no, it's, it's, it's actually pretty wise. It actually is pretty <laughs> wise. Like uh, I'm sitting here again, you know, playing with my own, my own systems. I think yeah. batching time was probably one of the like best things I ever tried. Um, like time blocking saying, okay, well from one to three, this is what I'm dedicating work, you know, my time to, and I'm trying to work on, on these specific activities. Going along with the theme of time management, if you don't mind, um, just because I use these conversations to sharpen my own tools. Um, how do you talk to yourself when you don't get all of your stuff done in that time block? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> um, you know, I've been trying to be more gentle with myself, yeah. but you know, sometimes it sounds a lot like, oh my God, what am I going to do? Like, you know, I have to get this done. Now I'm just going to go to bed later or whatever it is. Um, but I've been a little bit more diligent about the things I have to get done and I prioritize them. So then I know, for example, if something doesn't get done, okay, at least get a little bit of it done so that when we get on the team call, I have an idea of when I can have this finished. Because again, all of us are still really new to this. I can spit out a timeline and tell you how long I think this may take, but I might need a couple more days. And so for the things that we have softer deadlines with, I'll just be more gentle with myself and say, okay, cool. We got to be honest with the team and say, look, this didn't work out like I thought it was going to work out. And we have to, we have to work through it. Um, but yeah, on my best days, I just try to, okay, this it's okay. We're going to get it done. Yeah. Yeah. That's that sounds very healthy. I'll tell you that, um, man. I I beat myself up, but I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Um, it's a journey. It, it can be challenging, but I think it. I think it is important to give yourself that grace um, and understand. Like, look, one percent better is better than nothing. <laughs> and so, um, <laughs> if you have to, if you have to just take the small win, sometimes that that's really good. found this video to be helpful, please like, subscribe, or leave a comment. If you're an entrepreneur and want to share your journey and be helpful to others, please hit us up on our social media channels, or you can shoot us an email at behelpfulpodcast at gmail.com. Thanks. Be helpful.